we had sunshine. You know, it's always good to get out in the light. A lot of times, you know, when when you're in shadow, you know, when it's like kind of dark and kind of light, you kind of get a mixture, you know, and sometimes the camera doesn't know what to do. And sometimes people don't know what to do. You know, when you're in the shadows and not quite really in the light as he is in the light. You know, my wife only comes up to, oh, about here on me. You know, I feel sorry for her because uh, sometimes I go to hug her, you know, and she just kind of nestles into me, you know, and sticks her nose right up in my armpit. And you know what? It stinks. <laughs> yeah. Whew. Oh. I mean, my God, doesn't the guy ever use some deodorant? I mean, when you got hair like this, <laughs> you better use deodorant. Sometimes, do you ever find that people around you all seem to stink? Or maybe you've kind of involved yourself in a lot of people because you stink, you know? And then it's kind of like a, a cultural odor, you know? It kind of, you all smell the same. Do you stink? Hmm. How would you know? Has everybody, anybody come up lately and kissed you and said, man, you know what? <laughs> Whatever toothpaste you're using stinks. <laughs> oh, you're not using, oh, sorry. Remember the old commercials with scope? They used to say, put scope on it, put scope. It was a gargle, you know, where you had to gargle so you'd eliminate that gingivitis, you know, and all that bad breath. Do you have bad breath? When you share what you're really interested in, do your words stink? Is it like bad breath after someone has talked to you? You know, they kind of go, yeah, you know. I used to go to that guy and he used to have a lot of good things to say, you know. and it used to be real kind of uplifting now. I understand that you can't always be, you know, the power of positive thinking because that's garbage, you know, that's like Dianetics, that's all phony. And I know you can't always be like, you know, gaga, goo goo, happy, happy, but man, you know, every time I walk away from talking to that person, I feel like I need a bath. I feel like I got dirty or something, you know. Are you like that? Do people feel like after they talk to you that they listen to your latest gossip back by you? Latest fun, let's pick on this person because they're not one of us routines that they kind of go, they talk with you and they listen and they nod their heads, you know, but then they kind of don't spend so much time around you anymore. You know? And suddenly there's this whole new crowd that has come around you. you know? They all agree with you. Yeah, man, you know that person, I hate them too. They're so disgusting. Ooh, yick. You know, or have you picked up your own little Let's rebel against authority routine. Oh, we hate the president. Oh, you know, we hate our governor. Oh, we hate our state. Oh, we want this change and we want it now. God, you're not good enough. You're not moving fast enough. God, you may have put those people in authority, but guess what? We want to change and we want it now. We, we, we. Do you stink? Have you kind of gotten into some stinking thinking? <laughs> I mean, really, if you haven't figured out that people downwind of you might know more about you than the people upwind of you, maybe the wind needs to blow through you, cleaning out the dirty linen <laughs> and the stinking stuff that you've been doing, because frankly, it ain't happening. You see, God is in the business of saving souls. He wants people to come to Him in love. He wants people to come to Him in joy. He wants people to come to Him when they are in need. I see all the time people say that they hate Rick Warren, or they hate Oprah Winfrey, or they hate President Obama, or they hate Billy Graham, or they hate Greg Laurie, or they hate, they hate, they hate, they hate, they hate. They hate. They have this, oh, you got to say it this way. you got to do it that way. you got to, you got to, you got to. You know, 
people telling people what to do is kind of like one lump of doo-doo telling another lump of doo-doo what it ought to do. It just makes more doo-doo. <laughs> yeah. Wash your hands of it. The person that you want telling you what to do, where to go, what to say, and how to be, is God alone. He has given you His Word, the Bible. Now, He didn't say, take the Bible and run with it. Otherwise, He would have said, hey, Moses, go for it. Make up your own ideas. Oh, wait a minute, I think they did. We call it rabbinical thought. Oh, but they're Jewish, so they must be right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> How many Jews you know? <laughs> Not many, obviously. But God gave us his word to unveil his will so that from cover to cover we would see that Jesus is his will. The Father said, this is my beloved son, listen to him. But, but don't we have Moses and the prophets? Jesus said, hey, don't tell me you got Moses and the prophets. I tell you that you know what? From these very stones, God could raise up children. Uh, God can't do that. God can't move a rock that he could create bigger than he could move. So God obviously can't create children from the very stones. But Jesus said it. And Jesus was the creator with the Father. So, what can't God do? Again, I think we got stinking thinking going on. It's beginning to smell a little. Phew. Time to put on a little deodorant. So, maybe God isn't interested in what you are telling people what they got to do. Maybe God isn't interested in you claiming to be some kind of authority for him. I say it for the Lord because God can't speak. I don't care that Hebrews chapter 1 says that in times past he spoke through the prophets. But now in these latter days he speaks through his son. Forget that. we got to put the people back under the prophet. we got to put people back under authority so that we can speak for God. Stinking thinking. Prophets, if they are around nowadays, are supposed to inspire you to go to his word, not their word, to go to himself, not themselves, to listen to him and not them. They're supposed to point you to go to God, not go to them. Sheesh. How simple, but again. I think there's some stinking thinking going on. There's an awful lot of, you know, these quote-unquote prophets kind of getting a whole little flock around them. And that's not what a prophet's supposed to do. No prophet is supposed to have all these disciples around him. None. You tell me how many people were running around Samuel. Oh, yeah, okay, we've got John the Baptist, and they were all, you know, hanging around John the Baptist. But what did John the Baptist say? about himself when Jesus showed up. Follow him. Hmm. You know, if I got a prophet and I got the Son of God, which one do I want to go to? I think if I go to this one, since he's lifted up, I'm going to look up. If I go to this one, since he's from the ground, he's going to look down. Stinking thinking. I'm telling you. When I go to hug my wife, you know, she can tell whether or not I put deodorant on because, you know what, I go to hug her in love, I say, oh, God bless you, I love you, honey, and she can smell how stinking I am. Did you know that the closer people get to you, especially when they read what you have to say, when they hear what you're saying, when they hug you and try to love on you, they can still tell if you've been stinking, you know, because they go, when's the last time you washed your clothes? Yeah, when's the last time that you took a bath? When's the last time you used deodorant? Hey, boy, you know, God bless you and stay over there. Because they'll get up from their pew and move over one. <laughs> Bet you didn't know why they were moving. It's true that when a person, and you could try this, lives inside of a house, and say there's something in there that's stinks. 
the first wave when they walk in the door shocks them. Oh, that stinks. What is it? But once they've stayed in it for an hour, their nose becomes desensitized to it. Their mind tells their nose to ignore it. They no longer are aware that whatever it was that stunk stinks. And you know this is true because you've been in your house and you go, oh, man, something smells off, you know, and you, you didn't really pay attention to it, so you, you left, you know, and you went out of the house or maybe you went to the store to go get some Lysol, you know, or some air, air freshener. So when you left the house, you didn't smell it because you were on your way. But when you came back in the house, you opened the door, whoo, man, what's right? You started spraying like crazy because you were, again, resensitized to it. That's what the Word of God does for you. If you're not in the fruit of the Spirit, but you're in the gifts of the Spirit, you may be missing the point of your nose, which knows if you're stinking or not. So be careful. A lot of your fleshy ideas, when they're portrayed outward about works, really is a lot of sweat. And you know what happens when sweat happens? It's called perspiration. And when you perspire, when you have to work at it, especially with grace, it stinks. Be careful. You may be surprised. You go into a crowd and you smell something, you go, who flagellated? <laughs> I had to think of the word, but can't even remember. Who flagellated? That's disgusting. And some people think, that's funny. You know, next time somebody thinks it's funny when you flagellate, think about in the presence of God. Do you think it's funny to flagellate in front of him? Since Jesus is in you and I, I don't think that's so funny anymore. Could be like walking into the holiness of God and going, I don't think so. It may seem funny on the surface, but once you're there, you won't do it. <laughs> so, rather than being stinking thinking, I think we ought to be the aroma, the scent, the fragrance that God desires, which God says is our prayers, that they are a sweet incense to Him, that He too, because He has and has required that in his presence there be that burning of incense that God doesn't want to smell us either because he knows what we smell like. He created us. Responsibility. I am beside you a very human Jesus who understands all your weaknesses and sees to your struggles and conquests. Remember, I was the companion of the weak. And that's W-E-A-K. <laughs> Not the latest phase that you're going through ready to supply their hunger, supply their teaching, and teaching my followers their responsibility towards all people. Not only to those near and dear to them, but to the multitude. Gee, someone came to me and they said, you know what? I hate Oprah Winfrey. She's of the devil and she's teaching the devil. I said, so grateful. They came back to me, but you know, I got to tell people about Oprah Winfrey. I said, so tell them you're praying for her. They said, no, no, you don't get it. I really have to warn people about her over I said, well, warn them to pray for her so she gets saved. No, 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 you don't understand. I have to warn them and tell them not to do what, 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 what. you mean you want me to pray for her? It's like salvation. No, 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 that's not my gift. Really? <laughs> you see how easy it is to get off track when you should be on track so that you're a railroad, so that you're heading straight directions and not going around the curve and running off the tracks because you're going too fast to jump to judgment? Have you jumped the tracks on people that God is trying to save and you're standing in the way? God's business is about salvation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, who so believes in should not perish, but have everlasting life. And you are the communicator of that. You have been given life, grace, and mercy that you could share with others, life, grace, and mercy. You can love them into the kingdom of God. You could share with them and enjoy that long-term guarding effect of doing a little bit at a time and watching that little seed of the Word of God begin to sprout and grow. And as you begin to water it more and more, you can see how slowly a person comes to God. And once they do, whoo, 
Imagine the effect that they have. All because you took the time to not condemn, but that you convinced or you cared for the person God died to save. Lord, send them away that they may go into the village and buy themselves victuals. They can do themselves and find it for themselves. They can take care of themselves and they can go off their way, said my disciples, with no sympathy for the fainting, exhausted men and women and children. But I taught that divine sympathy and its responsibility. You give them to eat, was my reply. Uh, me? Uh, but Lord, you got, you got pastors for that. Me? Uh, but, but, but Lord, you got prophets for that. Me? But, 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 but Lord, you got the Bible for that. I mean, God, you got, you got worship leaders for that. I mean, you know, if she comes knocking on my door, maybe I'll invite her to my church. But, 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 maybe she could go to some other church. But, but, we have tracks for that. Not me, Lord. You don't want me to give her, him, them, something to eat, do you? I taught that pity without a remedy for the evil or the need is worthless. You give them to eat. Wherever your sympathy goes, you must go too, if possible. It's not enough to send a check. It's not enough to pray and say, Oh God, if it's your will, then go. Please help those poor starving people in Africa. It's not enough to simply say and write another check. As Keith Greenwood said, God wants you to go. Open your heart and open your eyes to the world out there. They need you. They don't need your money. God knows he doesn't care about your money. He cares about the love that you have in your heart that you should be able to share with anyone, anytime, anywhere, always. Otherwise, you know what? When you walk into God's presence, you know, especially on a Sunday morning or some other time, and Jesus said, look, if, any, if your brother has ought against you or you haven't done all these things that I've told you to do, you know, go first, reconcile yourself to your brother, then bring your offering to me, then come to me. But don't come to me first and then tell me, Oh, God, we love you so much, but we're not willing to do what you say. We're not going to feed the sick. We're not going to clothe the naked. We're not going to go and reconcile ourselves to our brother. We would rather hate them and you know, push them aside and tell them that they're not saved. Stinking thinking. You got body odor. And a lot of times, that's the problem. It's the body of Christ as body odor because it's been in the body of Christ too long. You go out and you find somebody that's hurting. You go out to a street person, they don't care what you smell like. If you got something good to say, guess what? They want you around them. If you got something to give to them, they want to take it from you. Believe me, they do. They want to have it and own it. But they're not going to buy into any of the bull, loamy that you're spewing when you don't bother to care. You see, one of the things people were shocked about me was that, you know, if I got dressed up on a Sunday morning and somebody got baptized, I'd hug them. Didn't matter if it was going to get my clothes wet or if somebody just got saved or somebody else went to see you know, whatever I was wearing, I'd hug them. Didn't matter whether they stunk or not. In any country that I went to, wherever it was, no matter what they were or what they were doing, I'd hug them. Who cares what you're wearing or what you're doing? My God, it's not like you're going to get sinful because you were just, oh, in their presence, like some people say, oh, you know what? These people, you can't go there, you know. God can't go there because God doesn't go there. Baloney, you can go anywhere you want to that God sends you. You give them to eat. Whatever your sympathy goes, you must go to if possible. Remember that in thinking of your own needs. Claim from me the same attitude now. When you want something for yourself, oh, it's easy to ask. You. But when you want something for someone else, do you ask with the same intensity? The servant is not above his master, certainly not in spiritual attainments. And what I taught my disciples, I do, I did, and I chose to make an example for you to do. So fainting and needy by the lakeside of life, know that I will supply your need, not grudgingly, but in full measure, as you choose to take that which you have and give to those who are in need. You feed them. You go. You clean up your act. You get prepared, as it were. But stop the stinking thinking and stop smelling like you think a rose. 
when really you smell like doo and do. You're just a bunch of doo doos wandering around trying to do something that God never told you to do. He didn't tell you to condemn the world. The world's already condemned. Nobody needs to be told that. They already know. You don't need to go out and like shock someone thinking that they don't already understand where the world is headed or what's happening in the news. They already know. What they don't know is the living God. And if he's alive and well and living in you. And there's only one way to show that. I can tell you this great analogy. Have you ever been in a store? Somebody walks by and you go, a woman walks by. Every man knows this one. A woman walks by and goes, and immediately his head turns and follows her because it's like that smell, that perfume just catches you and it just drags you along with it. I'll admit, sometimes people over perfume, older folk, but boy, if it's just the right scent, whew, it just drags you along with them. And you know, that's what God does. When it's godly and when it's Jesus, not only does it smell good, not only does it look good, but you can <sighs> breathe in life from it. It smells so good. You just <sighs> And that's what your words are meant to be. That's what your life is meant to be. That's what you, next to someone else, are meant to be. Someone they want to be around. Not someone that stinks. Because after a while, they won't be around you. After a while, neither will God.